Google knows a lot about us and that justifiably has a lot of people concerned. Just what does Google know about you and me? That's our topic today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? At Dotto Tech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, VR looks like fun. Today's topic is our privacy, especially relating to the Google ecosphere. And this is a challenging topic. In fact, this is the third attempt that I've made at creating this video. Let's hope third time is the charm. And the reason that it's taken me so many tries to get this video right is this is a very delicate and difficult topic to address because privacy is, there's so many different layers of our personal privacy that we have to deal with in the online world. There's a lot of confusion that's attached and frankly, there's a lot of fear attached as well. So I think that if we take the attitude that it's our responsibility to protect our own privacy online, then the steps that we should take include, first of all, educating ourselves as to exactly what information is being shared or being stored by whom in the online space. And for me, since I use so many Google services, a logical place to start is Google. So let's take a look at the information Google is storing in a variety of their different services. And fortunately, Google makes it fairly easy for us to actually access the information that they're storing. And we will have links to all of the URLs that I'm gonna be showing you in the description or in the blog post so you can do these activities for yourselves. And I encourage you to do so. So let's begin to educate ourselves on the information that Google has about us. That's the beginning of this process. And let's start with Google Maps. Now I am a big fan of Google Maps. Uh, we actually just created a video uh, on what Google Maps knows about you. And you can watch the entire video. It's a much deeper dive than we're gonna go into right now. But in the thumbnail condensed version of what is in that video, when you're using your smartphone and you have a Google account and you have location services turned on, Google Maps will track you on an ongoing basis of where you are and what you're doing at different locations. So you can view that by going to the timeline, which we will have the link to, and then you can go and you can look at what your activities are on any day. Now I'm gonna choose a day that I uh, know that I was at a fairly interesting place. I was in San Diego back a couple of months ago and I was speaking at a conference and here is all of my travels that particular day. Each of those blue lines are places that I traveled and places that I stopped through that day. The left-hand side here are all of the things that I did. It's actually got the locations of where I was and it even reminds me or it even tracks the photos that I took on my smartphone when I was at that location. Now this is a little bit creepy on one aspect, but it's incredibly useful on another aspect, but this is what Google Maps is tracking. You need to know this. And if you decide that you wanna take some control, some ownership over it, you might choose to turn off location services or you might choose to go in and actually manually delete different information from your, from your day. But this gives you access to knowing where you were and when you were at those locations. And this is all information that Google has and is storing for you. They're not necessarily sharing this with others, but this is information that they're storing of yours. Step one, Google Maps. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is ads. <laughs> now, ads are a little bit of a necessary evil online. We know that a lot of different services pay for themselves through the delivery of ads to us, and we're gonna get ads uh, sent to us in a variety of different places online. Now, some ads that we receive are really tailor-made for us. If you go and you say start searching for a power washer online, you know that you're gonna get a bunch of power washer ads. That's because they drop a cookie on you and they recognize that you have looked at that information before, that information shared with retailers who can then advertise to you. They don't know specifically who you are, but they know that this location, people were interested in power washers, so it's a good place to advertise. That's one form of ads personalization that happens. Google has another entire form of personalization that's based on your age, the information that Google knows about you, your demographic, where you live, those sorts of things, perhaps your income level, all of those sorts of things Google has information on you on. So ads are gonna be sent to you based on those criteria. You can actually go in here in the ads personalization dashboard <coughs> and you can modify the information that is gonna be sent to you 
and advertise to you based on these generalities. So and based on my activities and these generalities, this is what Google thinks I might be interested in. American football, I guess, okay, maybe a little bit. Business and industrial, okay, a little bit. Comics and animation, yeah. Computers, electronics, absolutely. Coupons and discount offers, uh, not so much. Dogs, yeah, I like dogs. So you can see that there's some information here. Now, if there's things in here that you absolutely are not interested in, you can actually tell Google, don't bother sending me ads on that. Or if there's things that you're really interested in, you can say, you know what? I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add some new topics here. I'm gonna find some things that I am interested in by adding additional topics. But for example, gardening and landscaping, we've just moved into a place with no garden. I'm not interested in that at all, so please don't send me anything. Gifts and special event items? No, not so interested. Uh, marriage? I guess I just got married, that's okay. Uh, politics, I'm fairly interested in. Smartphones, yes. So here we see all of the different things that they're gonna send me and things that I can turn on or turn off as far as customizing the ads that you're gonna receive. It gives you a little bit more control over your online life. The next thing I wanna show you is Google knows what you've been doing online, which sites you visited, what you've searched for, and all of that is in Google My Activity. Everything that you've done from all of your devices, your smartphone, your desktop or your notebook computer, even your Google Home Assistant, all of that information is stored here so you can see exactly what your web wanderings and searches have been. And you can go into any one of these and you can choose to delete it if you choose to. Just by clicking here, you can delete it from the archive so that it's not available anymore in the future. Google My Activity is a history of everything you've done online. Now, I wanna to talk to you about which apps have access to your Google account. Now we've all logged in to different services and had that say, we have permission to access your Google account for a variety of different reasons. And typically speaking, we say yes, we give them permission to access some aspect of our Google account. And it's usually a productivity and a functionality aspect of the tool. Now, the apps gaining access to your information has a bit of a bad name these days because of the recent uh, issues with Facebook and Cambridge Analytica, where different apps were gaining access to people's information so that they could be manipulated. Those apps, for the most part, are quite a bit different than the apps we're talking about today. The apps that we're talking about on Facebook were things like polls and contests and games and things like that that were really not in a productive environment, but instead in an entertainment aspect that were just designed to become an information vacuum to suck information out of you. In the case of the Google apps, the apps that gain access to your Google account, Almost without fail, these are productivity apps. These are uh, tools that you're using that have good reason to gain access to some of your information from Google to make it more convenient, to make it more efficient. And you can now go through, or you should go through, and you should check each and every one of these and make sure that they're things that you're comfortable with. And as I look through my list here, these are all tools that I use on an ongoing basis. And if I see a tool that I'm not using anymore or that I don't really remember giving access to, I can choose that tool and I can say, you know, that paperless post, this was all about doing invitations for our wedding and our marriage. I can say, what access do they have? They have access to my contacts, which I needed to send emails out, for example. And I can choose to revoke that access if I choose. I can also see when I gave it its access originally and also, of course, a link to the site itself. So going through, this is, a, this is an activity which is well worth your time, I would say. Go through this list. Make sure these are all tools you still plan to use and you know that you've signed up for them and, and then deal with any that don't fall in that criteria accordingly. You can just tell them, you know what, you don't gain access anymore. You can turn off access should you choose. So that is apps that have access to your account. Now, not only does Google track your online searches and track your online activity, but YouTube also keeps a history of your search history on YouTube, what you've been looking for on YouTube, and they store all of that in your YouTube history. So you can go in there and you can see exactly what you've been looking for and you can manage that information should you choose to. Now, all of this is just really the tip of the iceberg as far as beginning to understand how Google stores your information and how other services as well are gaining access to your information. But this is the beginning of an education process for both of us. Now, one thing that YouTube gives us, which I quite like, is a dashboard that has gives you access to all of the services 
that you're using from Google so that you can very quickly go in and you can manage each one of these accounts and, uh, and be able to deal with how you share information with each of the different services within Google. And that's called the Google Dashboard. The final thing that I wanted to show you today is the Google Checkout or Takeout, excuse me, Google Takeout. And this is a service that Google provides that allows you to export a copy of all of the data that Google is storing on their services to your local computer. And this is actually a fairly large process to undertake. Here we have a list of all of the different Google services that we can use that can store information from us. You can toggle on or off any of these different services and then you can go to the next screen which will allow you to create an archive which, they can, which you can then download to your computer. Now, in my case, I started this yesterday. I said, I want everything that Google has knows about me. I want to download it all. I started the process and they say right here, when you start to create an archive, they'll say this could take up to 48 hours. Now, in my case, it took 24 hours before I was sent this email here, which says your Google data archive is ready. And here's all of my different archives for each of the different services uh, that, that, that I have available to me. And if by clicking on manage archives, you can go back in to the, into the website and you can actually go in here and you can see, we see when the file was created, how many archives are in it and look how big it is. It's 108 gigabytes of data. My goodness, I have done a lot with Google over the years, have I not? That is an eye-opening number, that is. I hope this video has helped to kind of start to educate you as to what information Google is storing of yours and how you can begin to exercise some control over that information. In the coming months, we'll be talking a lot more about this entire security situation. Uh, we actually have a video plan coming up very shortly, which is going to be alternates to using Google services. If you don't like having your information stored in Google uh, and them tracking your information, uh, you know, which web browsers can you use, which email services can you use that will not track you the way Google does, should you choose to exercise that additional control over your privacy. So make sure that you're subscribed to this channel to, to, to see those videos when we upload them. I hope you found it useful. I, I would love to hear your comments below. I know there'll be a lot of comments about the world of privacy. Now, while I don't get a chance to answer each and every comment that is posted here in YouTube, I do promise you that I read every single comment. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.